The first thing that comes to my mind is that uh, no matter what kind of a vision or what kind of ideas a bishop might have, what kind of desires he might have to uh, somehow uh, lay out and bring to fruition whatever vision he has for a particular diocese, unless he can garner and organize and attract people to that vision by communicating it with them, but attract them to commit themselves to it with all their various expertises, talents, charisms, and so forth, uh, he's not going to get very far. And when I came to the Diocese of Greensburg, one of the things that I discovered right away was there were very many talented, gifted people here who could help me realize what I had in mind for the diocese after I became acquainted with its strengths and with its challenges. So, to me, just the giftedness that I experienced in that regard was, was utterly wonderful. And uh, in a way surprising, I say surprising because uh, I had never been to Greensburg before, before I came here. I did know some priests from Greensburg because uh, I studied at the North American College in Rome with Monsignor Gaston and Monsignor Fitzmorris. And I knew Monsignor Conway, who at that time represented Catholic Charities, uh, on the Pennsylvania Catholic Conference. So really, to that extent, that was the extent of my knowledge of, of people here in Greensburg. Of course, you know, as you know, I have an aunt who's a, a sister of charity of Mother Seton, Sister Mary Giles. She, uh, when I came here, was retired and living at Caritas Christi. Of course, I don't want to omit her. But I mean, for those who are directly attached to the diocese. Uh, so in, because of that, it was a surprise for me when I came here to discover so many talented and gifted people. And that became very apparent to me 10 years ago uh, at my ordination and installation. The superb way it was organized and everyone that I knew and all of those who were who came to that occasion just were so lavish in their compliments and their expressions of gratitude for the wonderful experience it was for them and I had a lot of people from Erie at that you know they came down from Erie and uh, so that was really for me a very heartening and uh, uplifting experience and for that reason encouraging for the future so right away uh, I began my tenure here, my stay here, feeling very, very gifted. There were a lot of people around me who would be able, in a very effective and productive way, to help me realize the vision that I you know, had for the diocese. So, very blessed. You've clearly received a lot of support from the people in the diocese. Well, thank you. I, I think that, if I do say so myself, is true, and I think the the uh, a tangible, very tan tangible uh, proof of that is the magnificent uh, reaction of the people of the diocese to the capital campaign. Uh, we, as you know, began that at the bottom of the Great Recession in 2008. And there were people, many of them businessmen, uh, investment uh, specialists, uh, who told me at that time when I broached the, the idea of a capital campaign, they said, Bishop, uh, with all due respect, our advice to you is not to proceed with this. This is, in our opinion, just not the appropriate time or the right time to do this. Don't do this because, Bishop, you run the risk of being remembered principally for this failure. So I listened to them and I began studying myself uh, some information about giving to the church. Uh, there was one, it was a history of giving to the church uh, in every recession since the Great Depression in 1929. And I learned from that that in all of those financial crises, giving to the church never, never, uh, never really suffered. So I said to myself, well, that's, that's quite powerful. And uh, also, uh, at that time, you know, we had just concluded the strategic planning process. And 
uh, I felt that there was a, a great deal of ownership for what came out of the strategic planning process. There was so much ownership, in fact, that I, I felt that because that same process identified our priorities for the next 15, 20 years, that people would agree with me when I said we have to put financial legs to these priorities, otherwise they're never going to be realized. And so, in spite of the fact that I closed, uh, let's see, 14 parishes, partnered 26 others, and uh, established two other new configurations, in spite of that fact, uh, people were willing to uh, go along with this, and they, they did support it. And uh, I was, it was risky because of the, the economic situation, but I thought to myself, too, there's never a perfect time to do a capital campaign. Uh, people will always tell you, well, in these economic times, you know, they always, they always uh, can find a reason. And, uh, however, I, I did not subscribe to the philosophy that uh, was broached to me by many. Bishop, don't make waves. Don't do anything. Just keep things on even keel and do your capital campaign and, and you'll get through it. You'll get through it fine. And I would say to them, you mean to tell me that I should take their money first and then close them down? And I said, there, there's, there's, it doesn't seem to me that that's the right way to go about this. I want them to see that what I'm asking them to do is a result of the planning process we just did. And secondly, it's good stewardship. And that should prompt people to realize this is the way really we should do it. And because of the buy-in, as I said, with the strategic plan, people just uh, reacted magnificently. And we had an absolutely stellar result. You know, as you know, our goal was 45 million and we, we got 55 million dollars. So, it, uh, it was, of course, the work of a lot of people, as you know, especially the laity. They rallied around this, and uh, uh, a lot of, tremendous amount of work was done. But look at the success, look at the endowments we established, and look at the endowments we, we uh, augmented, and so forth. And uh, it, it was a, a, a great success. So what a blessing. What a blessing. Uh, what does it mean to you to, today to gather with some of these people, these very people who have been so supportive of you? Well, as I said to, to a number of people this afternoon, it is such a consolation, such a comfort, such an encouragement to the priests and to myself to see these wonderful, generous, committed Catholics doing what they're doing, supporting you in the way that they are supporting the church. Because it says to me, it says to those priests too, well, we are doing a lot of things that are right. A lot of things that are right. And it sort of uh, gives you a perspective in which to put a lot of the criticism you get. So it's, uh, when I meet these people, it just, uh, you know, it's I see in them just wonderful faith witness, and it's 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 invigorating and it's encouraging. So, and of course, a lot of these people in, in the meantime have become real friends through all of this uh, this work, this joy and at times travail. I don't want to minimize that, but they have been real friends, and we have become personal friends. So, it's like you know. I don't want to say family, they aren't my family, of course not, but they're kind of like uh, extended family, so to speak. Very dear friends, very dear friends. And I, there again, what a blessing, what a blessing. Uh, and for that reason, I think I've had an extraordinary 10 years here in this diocese.